Okay guys, this video is briefly going to cover the difference between active and passive insufficiency. Easily right up there with eccentric and concentric contractions as sometimes the most challenging thing for people to get right. So, let's try to simplify this. Active insufficiency deals with strength or weakness of a muscle. The shorter a muscle is, the weaker it is. So, when a muscle is in its actively insufficient position, it is shortened and it's weaker. So a great example of this is hip extension with the hamstrings versus the glutes and combined. So if I do a straight leg raise hip extension, my hamstrings and glutes are extending my hip. Now what if I want to work on the glutes more than the hamstrings? I need to shorten the hamstrings by flexing the knee and now I can do more glute activation. That is active insufficiency. That is a big area where we use active insufficiency is strengthening between the glutes and hamstrings. Another example, heel raises. Knees extended, this is using gastroc and soleus. Knees flexed, now that's more soleus. <coughs> and that is active insufficiency. Make the muscle shorter, that way you can strengthen the other muscles around it. Passive insufficiency deals with stretching. It needs to be a muscle that crosses two joints, just like with active insufficiency. And this will affect your goniometric measurements if you're not paying attention. So the best example is hamstrings. So if I sit nice and tall, because my hamstrings on my ischial tuberosity, cross my hip, cross the knee, sit with great posture, that helps rotate that ischial tube back. If I try to extend my knee, I'm literally trying as hard as I can. My hamstrings are that tight. So you should be asking yourself, why is that? Is my joint, is my knee messed up? No, it's not messed up. If I lean back and put slack, give some slack to those hamstrings, now my knee's fully straight. That's why we measure knee extension in a supine position to eliminate the passive insufficiency of the hamstrings. So <coughs> another example would be the rectus femoris, one of four quad muscles that crosses the hip and the knee. The other three don't cross the hip. So a lot of people do this. See how my hip is flexed? Well, if I want to stretch that rectus, I have to get that back and I already feel a much better stretch. So the passively insufficient position for the rectus femoris is hip extension with knee flexion. So the passively insufficient position will tell us how to maximize a stretch for a muscle. So if you know all the actions of a muscle, you should be able to know it's passively insufficient position by reversing all those actions. Take the biceps. They flex the shoulder, flex the elbow, and supinate. So how would I stretch it? Extend extend and pronate and that's going to stretch the bicep. So we need to know the difference between a regular joint issue and passive insufficiency because that will determine the mode of treatment. So review quickly. Active insufficiency deals with shortening a muscle so that it's weaker thus allowing you to strengthen muscles around that area without that one kicking in. Passive insufficiency deals with stretching a muscle across all of its joints and that's what's re, uh, inhibiting the ability to fully, for example, extend or complete the range of motion. It's not because the joint has a problem, it's because my hamstrings are tight. And we'll practice some of this in lab too so you can see how that feels.